Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing about what is clustering and what are the types of clustering that are that would be used in the real world. And today we'll be specifically discussing about uh, what is k-means clustering, how it is implemented, what are the advancement of k-means clustering, that is k-means plus plus, and limitations for k-means clustering. So once we have identified the clusters, how to evaluate, what are the right number of clusters and what are the <coughs> metrics used for evaluating the uh, k-means clustering or instead of k-means clustering, what are the metrics that are used to evaluate whether the clustering are good enough. So let's get into the details. So what actually is a cluster? Cluster is a process of uh, cluster is a process of identifying group of similar points. So it is the cluster or grouping. Cluster is a process of identifying similar points within a data set. So what I mean is, uh, if suppose uh, if suppose we have <coughs> uh, we have a data such a way that sorry yeah we have a such a we have a data such a way that it is spread in form of groups. Like if you ask some. Uh, if you ask a person who doesn't know ABCD of clustering and you show this graph, he would say this is one group, group one, this is group two, group three, four, and five. So a person would say there are five groups of customer uh, within the whole data set. So that is essentially what a clustering is. Now, what is the process involved in uh, identifying these groups of uh, grouping these data points. So we have uh, different methodologies to identify these groups of clusters. First is k-means clustering. <coughs> Another methodology is uh, hierar hierarchical clustering. Third is db scan clustering so this is density based this one is uh, centroid based clustering so within k-means there is an advancement to k-means called as k-means plus plus which is also a centroid based, but there is a subtle difference between k-means and k-means plus plus, which we I'd be discussing further. And apart from k-means plus plus, there's one more called as PAM, that is partition around medoids. Okay. First, now let's look at what is a k-means clustering algorithm and how it works. So, uh, first, I'll give you uh, a geometric intuition. Intuition for k-means. Let me take black. Yeah. So imagine we have a data set with feature F2 and feature F1. And imagine if, if the data points are <coughs> spread like this, a, a scatter plot of uh, different groups of data points.
so as as you can see visually this is first group of data set this is second set third and fourth so set s1 set s2 set s3 and set s4 so within this sets what k-means uh, tries to do is it identifies a center within each set so if you have four sets it tries to identify four centroids and how these centroids are identified identified is so the points within this set uh, like <coughs> it is it, it tries to minimize the distance between uh, the centroid here and uh, the points within the cluster like this distance this distance this distance this distance all these distances they are uh, they are summed up and tries to identify a point within this set which which has minimal distance so similarly for similarly for um, <coughs> like a similar approach is followed for a second set as well so for each and every point it, it tries to uh, find a centroid such a way that the distance is minimal so this distance is called as intra cluster distance intra cluster distance so apart from identifying the intra cluster distance the k means algorithm also makes sure that the distance uh, between the points of a cluster are very farther from the points of another cluster so this distance should be farthest such a so this distance is called as intercluster distance inter inter e intercluster distance so essentially what k means tries to do is it has to identify uh, for all clusters i equals to 1 to k where k is the number of clusters and the points xi belongs to set sj that means for cluster k equals to 1 and the points belonging to the set s1 it has to <coughs> it has to uh, minimize the distance within the clusters so xi minus cj square this should be minimal argument this is the main obje objective of k means clustering so what it does is again i'll, I'll let me summarize for uh, if, if the data set is spread in form of groups so for each set it tries to minimize the intra cluster distance between the points within a cluster and it tries to maximize the distance of the points between two clusters between the clusters that is called as inter cluster distance so how how this process is achieved now let's get into the uh, k-means algorithm so how it is done is uh, initially when <coughs> uh, let me expand this yeah so initially we when we start the k clustering process k-means doesn't know uh, what are the right number of clusters so first step is to uh, initialize the centroids so imagine 
we have we we go with three clusters let's assume so first step is to initialize the centroids initialize the centroids if we say three clusters then we'll have three centroids c1 c2 c3 and these centroids are nothing but the data points so um let me say in this in this set if i identified this as a centroid c1 and this as centroid c2 and this point as c3 <coughs> so a random initialization is done c c2 can exist in in set s3 as well but uh, let's say uh, these points are randomly selected initialized as centroids so the second step would be second step is to uh, so second step is to for this point for these centroids we will uh, assign the data points to this set s1 s2 s3 second step is assignment that is so for each point xi belonging to set sj <coughs> we will uh, basically we will um, find the distances between the data points to the respective centroids so say we'll find the distance for point x1 to c1 c2 c3 now this point x1 will be and this uh, c1 belongs to set s1 this belongs to set s2 this belongs to set s3 imagine so this point x1 will be assigned to either of these sets if if the distance between this point and to this centroid is minimum so imagine imagine uh, my x x1 minus c1 this distance is greater than x1 minus c3 and this distance is greater than x1 minus c2 so what happens is this point will be assigned to set s2 like that <coughs> like that all the points are assigned so after this step let me So once the assignment is done, next step is to update, update the centroids, which means, so uh, once the, all the points are assigned to respective sets, obviously say visually, if you see this centroid initially, it is here, but uh when when all the sign all, when all the points are assigned to this set it recalculates the centroids what it does is it does it basically finds the mean of that set so xi so what it does is for all it will add all these points so xi is nothing but uh, this one is i so xi summation of xi is nothing but add all these points and divide it by number of points in this set so it will update the centroid from here it can become here now okay so this process is done till uh, <coughs> the centroids converge So convergence means like there's no more uh, update to the centroids. 
so till that process step two and three is repeated as assignment and update assignment and update <coughs> this is k-means clustering so uh, what could be the problems that that can be uh, uh, that can be identified with uh, k-means clustering so the first problem is initialization why initialization of a centroid can be a problem imagine we have uh, data points like this okay so in the initial initialization initialization process what if what if i select a point here here and here so what happens is um this like if you as you as you can know these three points could be the outliers so what happens is it, ideally this could should be one cluster and this could be another cluster but when we select an in, initialization process like this what happens is when it calculates the distance uh, and it when it when the distance is calculated from this data from this centroid to all the data points so <coughs> when the centroids are updated it may end up here the updated centroid and uh, instead of forming a cluster like this like this and like this what may happen is it, it can form incorrect clusters like this could be a cluster this could be a cluster and this forms as a cluster so outliers can affect the uh, initialization of the centroids that that is one potential issue so to overcome this um, a new uh, method was uh, identified that is k means plus plus what k means plus plus does is <coughs> it is it is k means plus plus is similar to k means that is initialize the centroids second assignment of data points to respective sets third is update the centroids and fourth is repeat step two and three till convergence However, one main difference between K means and K means plus plus is initialization of centroids. So how that is done is, um, so imagine we have a, a data set like with points x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6. So until XN, <coughs> um, so what it does is uh, imagine if if uh, I select a point X three as uh, the centroid C1 and <coughs> what it does is uh, it, it tries to what it does is it, it, it does a smart initialization what 
what it says is it creates a distribution like if x3 is selected apart from x3 it creates a distribution x4 x5 so on xn such a way that it finds the distances of other respective points d5 so on dn where this distance is nothing but from the point x1 it <coughs> finds the distance square for the initial centroid and for these distances it create it it finds a a probabilistic approach in selecting the next centroid probabilistic approach to identify next centroid say if you want to uh, say if you want to identify three clusters then the process of identifying c1 c2 c3 is first initially c1 is picked randomly in this case x3 so uh, for the other data points it finds the, their respective distances with the centroid c1 and it it it, find, it creates a distribution for each data point <coughs> so from this distribution to identify the next centroid c2 the process is it it does deterministically so what it does is it it finds a data point which has maximum distance with this centroid c1 so uh, but that process is done probabilistically so if if i have to uh, find the next uh, cluster next uh, centroid so the probability of d1 being a d1 being a next centroid is uh, the process of d1 being the next centroid is d1 by summation of dn so this gives a probability value right similarly for the next for the uh, for the point x2 it gives another probability value so on so the the data point which has the highest probability that becomes next centroid and once the centroids are identified this same the same steps of k means are done it, it does the assignment of data points to this each set and updates the centroids <coughs> and this process is repeated how this is advantageous with uh, in comparison to k-means is identifying the next centroid probabilistically so here also here also outliers can impact uh, k-means plus plus but as we are taking the probabilistic approach it would be limited so that is k-means plus plus next let's discuss about um, next topic is we discuss the limitations k-means algorithm k-means plus plus algorithm now how to determine what is the right uh, number of clusters so what is the right number of clusters that is nothing but right k so the process to identify is uh, first method is elbow method what elbow method says is <coughs> uh, we will we will do an iterative process for different values of k so for k equals to 1 2 3 so on say let's say 30 so for each k for e different values of uh, clusters we will identify something called as inertia 
I'll explain what inertia is and plot against number of clusters say 1 2 3 4 so on till 30 and if this plot usually the plot of elbow method is like this so this is called as an inflection point so what it says is first let me define inertia what inertia says is <coughs> it is sum of distances to centroids of each cluster divided by um, so okay I, I would say let's let's limit it to uh, summation of distances to the centroids that is inertia so imagine for the k equals to 1 obviously uh, the summation of distance to the centroids will be very high so the graph starts from here as the number of clusters increases <coughs> this summation of centroid summation of distance to the centroids will become decrease so there will be a rapid, rapid decrease initially but at one point that decrease becomes almost like straight line or stable and that is called as an inflection point and here this is right this determines the right number of clusters for a data set so say let's say here three would be the right number of clusters to go ahead with uh, grouping the data apart from inertia there's something called as uh, uh, oh sorry <coughs> and this 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 is also called and this actually inertia should be very less so essentially if you see this is intra cluster distance that we are trying to identify intra cluster distance so as we know uh, within a cluster the distance should be very less hence the graph is like this yeah so apart from uh, elbow method there's one more technique to identify the um, goodness of a cluster so that is called as sil hote score so what sil hote score does is it measures the goodness of the cluster what and this value ranges from minus 1 to 1 where 1 means it's a it's a very good way of uh, grouping the data points very good way of clustering the data zero means it's not good and minus one means uh data points are grouped incorrectly data points are grouped incorrectly <coughs> and the, how it is uh, calculated is So imagine uh, if if my data is grouped like this. This is set as one, and this is set as two. And if this is the centroid for set as one, and this is the centroid for set as two, how it is done is. Silhote score 
so you'll have to score or coefficient score or coefficient is nothing but first it it finds the maximum intra cluster distance and inter cluster distance so cellular score is calculated as b minus a by maximum of b minus a this this how a silhouette score is calculated if you essentially think <coughs> as we know a good, good clustering is the inter cluster distance should be very uh like it should be maximum and the intra cluster distance should be very less so if you think b should be maximum and a should be uh even if you take the maximum but this value should uh like the numerator should the numerator should increase which means a should be minimal by even if I take the <coughs> maximum of this thing and we know obviously intercluster distance would be maximum. This value, if it is closer to 1, even if a value like 0 0.8, 0 0.85, that's a, that's a very good Silhote score. And then we call it as a good clustering. So the next topic that we'll discuss is... <laughs> another method of uh, clustering the data so we discussed k means <coughs> sorry excuse me we discussed k means k means plus plus and one limit the major limitation that we identified is outliers even though k means plus plus does a smart initialization but still it can get affected by outliers so to overcome this oh one more point uh, in both in k means and k means plus plus this centroids gets updated as it's in repetitive process right centroids get updated so another problem is interpretability interpretability is an issue with k means and k means plus plus so to overcome this issue another methodology can be employed that is in identifying the clusters that is pam which is partition over midites which means so imagine <coughs> if we have the uh, uh, data points x1 x2 x3 x4 so on say x10 and we have to group these data points into say two clusters so <coughs> first we randomly or oh sorry not randomly not randomly we probabilistically probabilistically identify midoid m1 and next midoid m2 once we have identified probabilistically now swap non midoid points with midoid point which means say swap uh, okay initially let this be m1 and let this be m2 so what i'll do here is i'll swap x1 with m1 I'll swap x1 with m1 
So in the next process is we will calculate loss. So what is loss here? Loss is nothing but calculating the distance of each point with midoid. Okay. So what happens is <coughs> If, say, initially my loss was L1, L2 here. So once I swap X1 with midoid M1 and I recalculate the loss, if the new loss is less than L1, then we keep the swap, which means my x1 will be m1 now and x4 will be m2 if if uh, one second yeah if my new loss that i calculated is greater than l1 then we will undo the swap which means my x2 will remain m1 and x4 will remain m2 and we do this process till convergence that is no further swaps Right. So with this <coughs> process, the outliers won't be uh, won't impacted impact the uh, process of swap because the loss should be minimized and ideally the distance should be less, right, between the data points and the midoids. So outliers won't impact and the centroid, that is the midoids, are interpretable. So that is the advantage of PAM here. However, there's so much uh, computation that would be required for this process. Computation will may be a problem here for PAM. And uh, this is the theoretical part of uh, K-means clustering, K-means++ plus plus, and PAM. <coughs> and just to summarize, we discussed uh, what is a clustering what is k-means clustering geometric intuition and how k-means clustering works after that uh, what is uh, k-means plus plus and what is the key difference between k-means and k-means plus plus that is smart initialization what are the limitations for k-means and k-means plus plus that is outliers could impact uh, this uh, clustering process and also the centroids are not interpretable after that, we discussed about how to determine the right k, that is by plotting inertia and Silhote scores. And then we discussed about PAM algorithm, that is partition over midites. Now, let's look at examples, how uh, this process is achieved. <laughs> Imagine I have a data set which has age, income, spending score, and savings. So uh, let's look how the data set is. DF dot head of five. Oh, let me uh, read the data again. So initially the data is like this income is in, in four digit oh, probably it is a five digit number four to five digit number age is a two digit number spending score is in decimals and savings is in um, uh, probably a four digit or five digit number right so if you can see when i plot uh, <coughs> each and every feature with respect to other feature as you can see 
it already identified the groups within the data right so if i have to do a clustering for this kind of data set let's let me take uh, two features here for clustering process I, I selected annual income and spending score here and oh, probably the best thing is to take age and spending score as you can see initially <coughs> let's look at this scatter plot age and spending score age spending score as you can see people who are younger tend to spend more and people who are elder tend to spend less here the spending is less elderly people spend less and at the age group of 20 and 25 they may be initially saving but people who are probably between 40 to 60 they spend more maybe because they have families and all and people who are in their early 20s they tend to spend more <laughs> now the way to do the clustering process is first the data should be standardized why the data should be standardized like as you know these are in different scales like age is a two decimal two digit number and spending score is in decimals less than one so they should be get to a, a, a same scale so when we do a st standard scalar the values will be between minus one to one so this is the process to do that standardization of data and next is <coughs> initially let's let's randomly uh, as you can see probably there are one two one two three four five five clusters it's shown here right so let's see how uh, the data would be looking like when i just give directly five clusters so i'm i'm, I'm calling uh, k means method and it giving the number of clusters and i'm doing a k means dot fit what it does is for each data point it will assign a diff, uh, their respective clusters right and after that as you know we discuss inertia <coughs> so basically this 66 tells us with with k equals to 5 this is the inertia value and the silhouette score for k equals to 5 clusters is 80 percent which is actually good but as we know k is an hyperparameter as in when we change the value of k we can check uh how the uh, inertia value is and also how the silhouette score value is so here i'm doing the hyperparameter tuning I'm, I'm just giving a range between 2 to 11 that is nothing but i'm basically for k equals to 2 clusters to k equals to 11 clusters i'll be finding the value of inertia and silhouette scores and plotting against uh the respective clusters so I'm, I'm writing a, a, a wrote a for loop and giving the number of clusters as k means it changes from 2 so 2 to 11 and i'm finding the inertia value for each uh, value of k and also the respect to silhouette score and when i plot it against uh, the cluster as you can see with k equals to 2 and so on till 11 at k equals to 5 <coughs> we can see the inertia value almost becoming stable not decreasing uh, faster so this is an inflection point and this can also be confirmed by silhouette score plot as you can see it has peaked at k equals to 5 so the right number of clusters with this data set is 5 clusters yep and uh, i'm sorry i forgot to tell you one more thing so this k means method is available in sklearn.clusters and the metrics for evaluating the clusters that is the silhouette score or inertia is present in sklearn.metrics yep. yep. that's it for today guys uh, in my next video i'll be discussing about hierarchical clustering